Microphone chat one two one two. This is your host, not son, baby, and this is another episode of Swingers After Dark. You know, I want to pose a question that I'm going to answer, and that question is: Should you be a workplace boyfriend? And my thing is. Hell no. Hell motherfucking no. You should never be a workplace boyfriend. It's like, what the fuck is a workplace boyfriend? It's like, what is that? It's like, you get your shit off in a gym or in a bathroom or under the fucking cubicle or whatever the case. It's like, what that is? And you, you getting your shit off in the hallway, on the staircase, in the elevator, in your boss's office. What? Oh, hmm. That's not a bad idea. It's like, you skeeting on your boss's chair. On your supervisor or your manager's chair. It's like that's tempting. That right there is tempting. But anyway, I I don't want to get y'all motherfuckers fired. And then y'all start blaming me based on your fuck ups. So, you know, should you be a workplace boyfriend? No, you should never be a workplace boyfriend. Listen, fellas, you know, unless you are working at a temporary job, you know, it's a temporary job. You're going to be there like a few weeks and months. Something to hold you down until the next assignment. You should never mix business with pleasure. You know, you should never mix business with pleasure because let's say something happens between you and this chick and you got to see this chick every fucking day and it's going to be uncomfortable, especially when it's messy. It's like you have your messiness. It's bad enough that you may have messiness on social media or even in your neighborhood, but you're going to have to see that every day while you make your money. Like this is your livelihood. You know, if it's just a job, then it's like, eh, what the fuck ever. But if this like your career, if this is your bread and butter, fuck that. Even if this was your job, if this is your bread and butter, it's like, listen, there's too many women out here to fuck off your career because you want a nut. You know, you want a workplace romance. You understand me? It's like you go there, clock in, mind your business, do your job and leave. Or and and not even or and participate in certain activities because nowadays you have, you know, the office activities and they want you to become part of the team. So you won't feel like you're standoffish. So, you know, they won't ostracize you in this petty game of office politics and all that dumb shit. But, you know, pretty much you should clock in, mind your business, do your work, speak when you need to speak. Participate in certain activities just to say that, you know, you're part of the team and you don't think you're better than everybody and then clock back out and collect your money. It's like, how hard is that? But, you know, motherfuckers, you know, humans make the most easiest thing. It's like you humans make the easiest things complicated. You understand me? And, you know, we're living in this era of me too, time's up. You okay, sis? You know, we're living in an era where, you know, a a lot of cases are coming back to haunt dudes. Like, a lot of situations, even if you didn't do it, even if you did not do what you were accused of, like, shit that happened 5, 10, 15 years ago, it could come back and bite you in the ass. So, you know, we're living in that era now. We're living in that society now. So, don't give a chick the satisfaction that... She could fuck your shit up. She could pull the rug from under your feet. And now you asked out because you were thinking with your dick instead of thinking with your head and realizing that you're not supposed to shit where you eat. And if you do shit where you eat, then you eating shit and you should never eat shit. You should eat caviar. <laughs> you understand me? So you should never be the workplace boyfriend. Now, I know there are some instances where, you know, people find love at the workplace. Yes, people find love, legit love. People find their soulmates at the workplace. It happens because you you know that your mate has a job. You know that your mate is not a deadbeat. And in a lot of cases, you know how much your significant other makes. And you know that your significant other is not a flunky, that your significant other can hold down a JLB or has a career. So, it's like you, you, okay, that's set in place. That idea of you knowing that I know what my mate is doing, and not only I know what my mate is doing, but I get to see him or her every day. You understand me? And you with somebody, you with somebody the whole fucking day on the job. So you could get to know that person. You understand me? You could get to see that person every day face to face. So, you know, have been a workplace boyfriend, it, it could help. It, it could help if 
if the both of you got to be mature first of all. Well, let me let me back up. Er, mature. Let me get my bougie on. Mature. Yes, but the both of you have to be mature enough to where if y'all break up, y'all not gonna fuck over each other's money because y'all have something to lose. And that's another thing. If you're gonna fuck on a job, make sure that the person you fuck with, the chick you fuck with, got something to lose. Make sure that everything is at stake with her, just like how everything is at stake with you. Because if you working at a job and this chick doesn't give a fuck about losing her job, then don't fuck with her, yo. Always fuck with people who got something to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck with them because they not going to be so quick to blast off at the mouth. They not going to be quick to fuck your shit up. You know what I'm saying? They they, they not going to have this scorched earth mentality because they know if they put your shit on blast, then by proxy, they putting their shit on blast. You understand me? And another reason why you don't want to be a workplace boyfriend, because, you know, if you don't save them texts, them, them Skype messages or them Zoom messages or them emails or them text messages, if you didn't save any evidence that this chick wanted to fuck you just as much as you wanted to fuck her, then your ass is grass. Yes, you're down for the motherfucking count. That's why, listen, if, you fuck, if you're going to fuck with a chick at the job, make sure you save those text messages, those emails, those IMs, those DMs, those instant messages, IMs, DMs, text messages, phone calls. Fo listen, keep receipts. You know, them naked pictures she sent you. Make sure you keep receipts, yo. It's like, you can say, look, this was consensual. I don't know what the fuck is she's talking about. It's like, she wanted me just as much as I wanted her. Or you don't even have to say that. You don't even have to say that. You could just, look. Look at this. Look at these text messages. Look at how she said she wanted to suck my dick six ways to Sunday. Look at how she said that she wanted a threesome with me and my homeboy or me and her homegirl. Look Look at how she said she wanted to lick my ass. Look how she said, like, shit like that. It's like, you have evidence. You got proof. You know what I'm saying? You got receipts. And you know what they say? It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. I'm going to say that again. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. And when you got those text messages, e Charlie, shucky, ducky, quack, quack. You end that like swimwear. So... You know, I I just wanted to talk to the to the fellas right quick. Just make sure you know you cross your T's and dot your eyes. You know, screenshots. Yo, them screenshots, them screenshots can help you. Like a screenshot is the difference between freedom and being locked up behind bars. Real time, them screenshots, them text messages, safe evidence. Keep everything on file. You know, keep everything on record. You know, so if they talk that shit, if Shorty goes to HR. Because you don't want to fuck with her anymore or, you know, she's catching feelings because you got a new girlfriend or she finds out you got a wife and you being a creep and you did not tell her that you had a whole wife at home. If she try to act bad on you, if she try to break bad, then you can say, hmm, look at here. This is what I got. And then those tables turn, baby. Those tables turn. And on that note, this has been another episode of Swingers After Dark. And this is your host, Nassan, baby. Check out my website at www.nassanblaze.com. That's www.nahsunblaze.com. And check out my ebook, You, Me, Us, Them. The Swinger Manifesto is on Nook, Kindle, Ibis, Google Play. Go get it. Shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail.com. That's swingpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up with any questions or concerns. That you may have, have, have. Rate, share, subscribe, and comment on this podcast. You da 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 dig. And on that note, until next time, peace. And keep those receipts, man. Keep those receipts.